guess we'll just start recording. Um, all right. So last time, wait a second. What was last time that we actually played? There's so much happened when we did like in the writing of stuff this week that I've now lost track. Everyone was here for the last session, right? And, and so the four key events were a few days past. Uh, Mercury talks to him with some convinces her to allow Concord to examine the streak. Concord has a plan. Uh, Ghost Girl teams up with Lucius to close the hole in Con Oakland Cemetery. She's partly successful. And Mercury manages to secure a date with A10 at the cost of his mouth. At the cost of his mouth? Is that what you said? Or tongue specifically, depending or on his intestines. <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yes. Right. She gets to pick. She gets to pick where they eat. Probably going to be a burrito place. Anyway. <sighs> um. Okay. Where should we begin? Now, uh, I think it looked like most people are somewhat up to date, up to speed a little bit on at least some of what had been posted. For those of you who are listening and are wondering what the heck I'm talking about, uh, over the course of the week in forum posts, Leo went to visit his dad. That went about as well as to be expected. And the Aegis prison, where his dad is currently incarcerated, is now uh, hmm, like a bit of a target of hijinks and craziness has begun to happen but that got us a little bit further forward on the timeline uh from some other folks so we need to do a few things to get some folks caught up and that means i think that we should jump over to mercury and concord who are if i'm not mistaken heading into the hospital where silver streak is being taken care of to see if they can do anything for his situation. So, uh, yeah, uh, Mercury, when you, when you, uh, get there and walk in, your mom is, your mom is there? and your grandmother is there and she sort of takes one look at adam now concord are you sort of in mode uh yeah it's concord time okay all right so given i just heard my wife my uh, daughter kind of chuckle from the other room at concord time um okay so you walk in like that and you're you're then a little you're you're actually in Concord form. You're you don't look any younger really than Harry functionally. Is that right? That's about right. Yep. Uh for reasons went into before, Adam looks roughly the same age as uh uh, uh Harry. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um so yeah. When you come in Grandma Swift is arguing, or at least seems to have the body language of somebody who's arguing with uh, uh, Harry's mom, but she uh, does not go, oh, Lord, and roll her eyes when Concord walks in because he doesn't look like a 12-year-old. Um, something she has i mean she's paid enough attention to know how he's looked in the past and she kind of like oh um she comes over to you harry and says something like i don't like this idea but I trust you, and I recognize that I'm not the one calling the shots anymore. And she kind of, she doesn't look at your mom, but she definitely directs it in the in in your mom's direction. Um, 
who is just sort of standing there, kind of tight-lipped. Uh, do you do you do anything or say anything to Grandma? She's gonna she's heading towards the door after she gives you a bit of a squeeze on the forearm kind of thing and nods to Adam. No, I do not. You just kind of let that go. Don't ah. don't want to debate uh, niceties with Grandma. That's that's probably for the best. Okay, so uh, Concord says Tempest. My son seems to think that you can do something about Silver Streak's condition here. Is that true? Do you feel the same way? I've got a little bit of experience doing this sort of thing. Really? I mean, how how much you you're you kids have only been active for about a month. How much experience could you have with something like this? Jason Quill. Huh. Well, I'm comforted by the fact that that is probably a good representation or a good argument for you having lots of practice. I'm less comforted by uh, what may or may not be your success rate in that regard, but I'll take that for what it's worth. Please, boys. Be careful. If, if there's any sign that this is going awry, I just want you to back off. Uh, he's tough, and he'll he'll eventually recover on his own. I'm convinced of it, but I wouldn't mind seeing him sooner rather than later, if that's all right. So just be careful. And with yourselves, too. Some of these situations I've found uh, in the past can be dangerous for the people who are trying to help as well. All right. I, I, unless you want me in here, I'm going to step out. Unless you want me in here. Do you want me in here, Harry? For you want... It's gonna be easier on me the fewer people I have around me. <laughs> All right, then I will try to keep everyone out of the room for a little while. It won't be able to last long. He's got about an hour before he the, the nurses come in, so hopefully whatever you're going to do won't take much longer than that, if if it does anything at all. In the meantime, I'll run it. I'll run interference. So, Adam, mm -hmm. what did you, you, we had love letters with you last time, I and what was the end the result? Two burn. You've got two burns sitting there for uh -huh. whatever. Yes, and, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I did not have time to actually get everything finished for it, but I have a thing sitting where Adam practiced this thing. <laughs> okay. What, what I didn't you... get time. I didn't have time to finish it. But finish, uh, like what? An art thing or a or a thing thing? Like a what? Uh, uh, it's another comic. Unfortunately. Oh my god. Okay. When it took when it took me a week to do two pages, I really should not have written out five. Oh dear. So. Oh, oh my word. Okay. Well, what? So, uh. What burn then are you uh, what burn effect then are you going for? And do you need more burn than just the two points that you The two points will get me there, but I'd rather feel safe. Okay. So I uh, uh, you know, it'll be one of those things where I feel like Adam's just gonna be like, All right, Harry, you get over here. We're gonna see about sinking you and your dad up here 
Oh. Oh my God. It's Concord time. I like that picture you shared. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Harry, what? Where do you want Harry to be? Just basically where I can grab both of them. Okay, Harry, what do you do? What's 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 your what's your take on all this? I am trusting Concord. All right. So this is like a like a hold hands kind of a thing, or what are we doing here? Yep. Describe to me what's happening. Um, basically, Adam's gonna grab onto Silver Streak and grab Harry's hand, and you know, I imagine this is going to be like a journey to the you know to the center of the mind sort of thing with yes. Adam facilitating the whole sending Harry there as part. illustrated by Jack Kirby and every other uh, artist who ever worked on Doctor Strange circa 1978 yes okay um so when you say you want to play it safe does that mean you're rolling for additional burn that you want to burn or what's happening yes here? okay so why don't you is that just you're just rolling conditions on that is that right yep i roll burn well then roll your burn sir what did we get i got a seven which i believe means i take a condition yeah let me look at what the whole actual thing is ploop plorp flare i don't have burn oh, out yeah, there yeah, really sure yeah just for a reference uh, what's it? Yeah. Can, you, can you can you hit me with it? Yep. Uh, burn when you charge up your powers. Roll plus conditions that you currently have marked on a hit. Hold three burn. So I have five burn total. Okay. And then what's the what's the follow on for seven to nine? Uh, on a seven through nine, mark a condition, which I am going to say is. You can, if you want, wait and see what's happening here inside of streaked head and go from that there is, that's a good point you can you can certainly do that and see what yep. comes from that um so yeah i would like to use the concord powers to send harry into the thing oh so what 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 burn effect are we going with here what is what's happening ah well since this is probably an unleash your powers yes we're gonna go for player? we're gonna go yep yeah, we're gonna go for the tapping into the genome and spin oh. to burn to get the ten plus. All right, channel the full capacity of your incredible powers to become an obstacle to overcome an obstacle. Take ten plus when you unleash your powers. Okay, so I'm just looking at a couple things here. Are you going with him or just throwing him into his dad's mind? Um, I don't know. I mean, can I go along with him or do I have to kind of act as the conduit and kind of like I have think, an, I think an overwatch position or think, how is this? I think mentally you're, you're not so much sending him physically in there because that would make his skull explode, but, uh, so much, oh, no. yeah you're not so much you're sending him mentally in there and, and given that i think it makes sense for you to well i don't know i think it could go either way where you sort of stay above and beyond it a little bit um and sort of put him in there but i think because of the resistance um i am gonna say It's actually, I'm going to say that this is actually probably going to be three burn because it's a combination of the overcome and also moving to a place that you choose within the scene, which in this case is going to be into streaks consciousness. Does that follow? Yeah. Okay. And you're kind of a, but like I said, you're sort of, I guess if you want to picture it this way, sort of above and be above and behind Harry as he's sort of cast down into this thing. Um, And there's a little bit more resistance than you're expecting from just a, even a metahuman type of, uh, 
consciousness uh, a lot more a lot more so than you were sort of expecting um, and there's a really strong resonance there so it's not so much that you have to overcome a, 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 a it's not so much a barrier as it is like if you're holding you suddenly find yourself holding two really strong magnets and trying to keep them from snapping together and like crushing your fingers between them and kind of controlling that and then uh passing harry through so what i'm i'm risking a lot by asking this question harry what give me the basic if you if you want if not i will do it but um what's the unconscious landscape of silver streaks brain look like what's the set me the, set the stage for me how weird is it or not weird Does it look I, like your kitchen? <laughs> is, he, is he caught in a permanent I, mental loop of a high school track track meet? Or horrifying? Um, no, I think that it's calcium, but in perfect kind of dream logic, there are. People and things that were never in Halcyon that are there. Like, like what? Foes, maybe a restaurant from China that he's always he been fond of. To you know. And okay, so we'll we'll like yeah, that's good. I like that. Um. Where is he at in this? Like, if you're looking around and you're saying, like, look, I know this street, but that store is not there and that restaurant's not there. And sort of like all of the stuff that you know, like there's a bunch of stuff there that you know that's important to him that's all kind of in one place. And like there's behind you, look kind of behind and that's like two blocks down or maybe not even that far. Um, the city just stops and and the Gale estate like starts like it's just like blink and you miss it like you just walk down the street and you're going to be right there at the Gale estate really close but a um, bunch of other stuff where is he at in this sort of weirdly um twisted kind of city uh or probably where, I'm sorry, you, you, I missed a step there. Something, something, probably. HHL Tower. Oh, okay. So the tower is like... <laughs> I love the idea of the uh, real estate here because, you know, restaurant, a shoe store that he really likes, clothing place, you know, a movie theater. His house is like right behind. And like looming, you look up and looming over it is the HHL Tower, which is nowhere near um this area and as you follow kind of follow it back down to the ground you're standing you find yourself standing in front of the doors of it even though they weren't there before um so looking up to the top and then panning down you kind of pull yourself to the front of the thing um is he standing outside is it you just get a sense that he's inside somewhere inside feel like in the meeting room where yes uh, to us about what they had done with iceland and everything that is so good i love that yeah so you go to you go to go to the inside the building and you open up the doors and stepping through the doors you step through the front doors of the building and into that meeting room like into that conference room and everyone's everyone's there kind of uh but it's like you know how in the in the Berlanti verse you've always got those little silver mannequin stands with the suits on. 
you know, so you've got the suit, but then there's like just sort of the sort of shapeless silver face underneath um, where the face would be. Uh, that's kind of how everybody's like. So all of the HHL guys are sitting there, but they're all like not moving and they're all kind of like different colored sort of mannequin figures up underneath the suit, except for your dad who's sitting there. Is he is he in his suit or is he just in regular clothes? with the hood down okay so he's there but the cowl's back all that kind of good stuff cool cool um in this setup all of your friends from the menagerie are also in the position kind of vaguely basically where they were during the whole big revelation and there's kind of like some red energy around Hecate, Hecate um, or I shouldn't say it, like it's more of a yellowish kind of an aura over in that area. Feels like anxiety. Um, there's a lot of warm blue around. Is blue heart? Uh, Concord? Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of like sort of warm blue around your mom um or at least the mom figure um weirdly there's a lot of anxiety around your figure and your figure is is kind of the space that it occupies is sort of hazy and kind of weirdly out of phase i don't want to say vibrating exactly but it's definitely not uh you know there's more just action around it that tends to get that actually gets a little bit like vibratory kinetic energy around it that gets stronger the closer you get to that spot. Um, what do you do? He's not really looking around exactly. He's sort of staring at his hands. His hands are up on the table and sort of cupped there and he's not really looking around. go over to him okay what do you uh do you do you like walk around the little cluster of your friends uh ignore them what do what do you touch any of them you don't want to touch it okay all right so you're kind of there in your street clothes so there's sort of in a weird way kind of two of you in the in the room kind of because there's the you in this empty mannequin thing that's there in the suit and everything and then there's you sort of in school you know in the street clothes the sort of the the, the uh, gardener uniform uh kind of just you know walking up to him and, and stuff what do you what do you do getting up you come up to him here and he's his cupped hands have kind of a weird almost like yarn like ball of of line ener like sort of energy lines kind of folding in and out folding in and, and out through itself uh he's not really doing it to his hand it's they're just sort of it's it's happening between his hands he's not really doing anything you don't really get the sense that he's holding it it's it's the hands are just sort of there because that's where he's paying it like that's the thing that he's paying attention to and he's sort of framing it with his hands more than not holding it or anything like that. And he's watching. My golf. Oh. My gone. What do you do? Sorry, I had to sneeze there for a second. Add. He's not really, he's really like you get the sense that he's aware of everything in the room, but he's 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 not only kind of peripherally. He's really like all of his focus is on whatever this thing is that he's focused on so much. Whether it, and it's the same yellowish kind of energy lines as the sort of anxiety energy around like Hecate and around you, and in more vaguely kind of around the whole menagerie team. 
but there's this whole ball of it like right there as well that's really um that's really holding all of his attention what happens if i try to touch the ball uh i don't know what happens when you try and touch the ball let's uh let's have a i think this is a freak roll because you're you're kind of overcoming this barrier trying to do something there with him well actually let's back this up a little bit because you can you can there's there's this thing that it, you know if you're trying to interact with that then it's it's definitely that freak roll there's also if your if your goal here is really just to like get your dad to do a certain thing that's a different that's a different thing. So are you doing it to figure out what the heck this thing is? Or are you doing it to kind of like pull your dad's attention away from this thing? I was doing it because that's all of his anxiety and guilt from and everything. My gone. Yeah, I think that's, that's, I think certainly, uh, bang on the money in terms of so that's why you're fiddling well no that uh, that's some I, that's some background for it but is is it more about figuring out what the heck this thing is or is it more about reaching like like getting your dad to to blink is this more about him or is it more about the thing it's more about trying to Or do something with the ball so that so that he he can kind of hmm. let me okay so are you trying let me I'm, I'm gonna keep drilling down on this until I get to where we're are you trying to get him to do a thing or are you trying to break through a barrier It's, I realize it's a bit of a nuanced thing there, but are you trying to get him to draw back from this thing, or are you trying to break the thing's hold on him? The thing's hold on him. Okay, in that case, we're definitely we're, we'll go for a freak roll. So if you wouldn't mind, freak me. Freak out. Oh, look at that! Very nice. Okay. Whoa. Good roll. Only time that's going to happen today. <laughs> well, I mean, Link led the way because he had a freak roll too, and he uh, he somehow managed to pull out a. Whoa, that was a negative one on the freak in the first place. Yeah. And you yeah. still end up with a ten. That's that's uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Definitely not playing to your strengths on that one, but you pulled it out there. Okay, so Adam, Concord. When yes. you, uh, when he reaches out and sort of like, so what do you do with that? Like, do you, do you cover it up? Do you try to grab it? What do you do, Harry? Uh, match its vibratory folding or what? Thinking kind of. Put my hands on top of his so that he's not really in as much direct contact with it. Okay. All right. Uh, when you do that, when he does that, and Adam, you're kind of watching from, again, back in a way in, in a direction that really doesn't physically exist in this room. If it were the real room, you'd be inside the walls. Um, mm -hmm. So you're really kind of watching this like a distance removed from it kind of hazily through a, a viewport uh, space through through the walls kind of a thing. When he reaches out towards Streak's hands and towards this energy signature, which is giving you a bit of a, a, a crocodilian hindbrain itch whenever you look anywhere near it, um, that sense of that magnetic pull between the, like the two gets way, way stronger the closer he gets to that thing. So there is, uh, and you, you've got control over things, but there is definitely a sense of real 
uh, it's not, it's, it's danger. It's certainly danger, but it's, 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 it's a sense of like a, a real, like attraction or affinity. I mean, the strong magnets are really about the best thing that you're really processing out of this thing, but something is you is really strongly reacting to that thing or or some some energy that you're keeping balanced to make this whole thing happen i shouldn't necessarily say energy in you but um although that's fair you're probably most of the power source in this room right now so uh -huh. harry please please don't touch the ball again. <laughs> this is hard enough as it is and you can kind of hear the strain in his voice like he's like the kind of strain that you would hear from somebody if they were trying to hold like two five gallon buckets of water like straight out from their sides on both sides and talk normally at the same time. Okay. Uh so you your dad, when you take his hands and you kind of pull them back away from this thing, lets out a a like a real long, like kind of I mean, you almost think of it as a as a yoga sigh kind of a thing. Like if your mom's doing yoga in the living room and lets out one of those big cleansing, like ah, kind of things. And he kind of does that. He doesn't look up. He doesn't look around. But you are you do manage to pull his arm. There's some resistance. He doesn't just his arms aren't slack, but you are able to pull them back kind of towards his body a little bit and away from this whatever it is um and you can feel a little bit of that tension sort of s leave him maybe or at least be forced out a little bit almost so it's almost like as you pull his arms back it's like pressing a bellows okay where, what do you i mean you've got an up i don't need to have you roll again you've got an opportunity here to kind of I guess you, you, you've got a, a, a break somewhat on this thing's attention grabbing hold on him. What do you, what do you do with it? Um, try it. to go ahead. Communicate with, uh, with, with your dad. Um, okay. So you can kind of, you pull his arms back and you kind of can turn him in like the turning chair so he's sort of facing you a little bit, but still not really looking up at you or anything. Um, he's frowning and thinking really hard and looking vaguely kind of sick to his stomach kind of deal. Um, <laughs> I, sorry. I have this horrible image of him, like whispered in the same tone as Rosebud, and so, except instead of Rosebud, he leans in and whispers eggplant. Um, don't know why just don't know why anyway but you kind of get down like on one knee sort of so you're sort of kneeling kind of in front of him and can kind of get in his in his eye line to kind of like do something here what do you what do you do what do you say what do you uh what do you tell him or what do you slap him yeah just um crack across the face now it's not the answer. Super speed punch. Um. Uh. Take your time. It's all good. I got an audio, audio editor. It takes all the si all the all the dead dead silence out afterwards, so it's all good. Uh... Do you need to phone a friend? Do you need some coaching on this? Or some suggestions. They could be bad suggestions. I love bad suggestions. Cause it's like, no, that's terrible, but it did give me an idea. Hot. 
Sorry, say that again? I, I kind of have a thought. Okay. Hit me with what you got. Uh, fine. Uh, uh, fault. So, uh, so say that again. You're saying it, it's not his fault, or, or what, what were you saying? It's not his fault. <sighs> that it's all fine. It's not his fault. Okay, so you're you're gonna you're you're just you're saying that to him, trying to get him to hear that. Um, I'm okay. The thing is kind of let go of him a bit. At least you've kind of separated him from it, if nothing else. Uh, this, and I'll say this also, Adam. The reality of this is a lot stronger than you would expect from. Your your impression of Silver Street has never been such that you would expect his his internal mental palace to be particularly solid, strong. It's just not his. That's not where he goes. That's not his thing. And this is very much the opposite. Uh, it, it's it's got a real sense of weight and and reality to it. Um. Harry, I'm going to throw another one at you here. Um, I'm curious about this this link that, that Dave's providing. I'm going to ask you for a... <laughs> I like the picture. Um, I'm going to ask you for a provoke, which is... Oh, my God. I, I don't mean to be picking... I just looked at your stat. I don't mean to be picking on your worst stats, but this is a mundane role. Oh, and it's also guilty. Let's see what we can do here. Ha ha. Oh dear. Provoke is superior. Oh, is it? Oh, never mind. I thought it was mundane. It is superior. You see, you, you do still have a penalty for guilty though. Um, yeah. But you're you're trying to snap your dad out of it, and I think provoke's probably the most appropriate thing here. So, let's see what you got. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Is that for him? What's that? Does having influence help? Uh, yes, it gives you a plus one. Uh, I I can't pull you out of that one, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of that's a lot to be pulled out of. Um, so yeah, it does give you a plus one on the roll. Um, but it's not really enough to get you up there. That's all right. Um, Mark. Uh, Mark, X uh, Mark XB. Mark Mark potential. Certainly. Um, the thing is that what you're doing, you have this sense as you're speaking these words, the words that are coming out of your mouth are so, have, have such a strong antipathy to the reality that he's formed in his head that they just, they, they come out with just such a jarring dissonance it's it's like that. It's like a. Uh, why, why are you insulting me with these obvious lies? Yeah, well, it's, it's it's the sound itself is is like you know how they have those like sort of uh, uh, the, the the little uh, metal things that hang down in like band and stuff that you can sort of you have the percussion people trail their hands through and it makes the little like glittering. Uh, they use it a lot on Christmas concerts. Um, it's a little, chimes. Little, little, it's kind of chimes, but they're really small. They're little, yeah. No, I know what you're talking yeah. about. I want you to imagine those a lot bigger um, and and kind of made out of crystal and tuned to to not be in tune with each other. Like just incredibly dissonant, clashing sounds that your very words make as you're uttering them this. The frown uh, uh, on his face deepens. And the uh, um, tears kind of like his eyes squeeze shut and tears kind of leak down out, out of the corners. Um, his hands in yours really like clench and he kind of like leans forward and kind of hunches a little bit. Um, 
all of the figures at the table sort of kind of like grow in intensity like they 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 gain a a, a level of density almost and uh concord you feel that weight that that um like sort of gravitic pull from the reality of this thing pull pull even harder on on you as this clash is happening as this force whether it's a uh, uh, streak or whatever it is um resists and tries to reinforce the reality of this of this space um and and reinforce the reality of like no this is his fault no this is this is what's deserved this is the this is this this time and place that he's that he's going to be in and going to relive um since i kind of have a like an unusual overview of all this and yes slight slight more familiarity with what's going on here i will say also as the reality and the of that play, space kind of intensifies your view kind of through from further out um you feel like you're you're pulling you're getting yourself pulled in a little bit closer but also that sort of hazy through the looking glass kind of space that you can see this through uh tightens like it, it gets smaller and the edges get harder and it's just a little it's 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 worrisome i'll put it <laughs> it's very worrisome can, can i kind of stop and sort of like try to see what i can make of all this uh sure in what way would you like to do it? like you like what like, what's what's really going on here what's what's the deal like and assess the situation yeah sure i think that makes sense i think that makes all kinds of sense harry what's your what what does it look like to see your dad's face in such pain and like the tears running down and his clenched up when you say it's not your fault and it's you in a weird way the the response his groan and and the sounds in the room and stuff like that almost to make kind of a guttural like denial sound like a, a, like a, gr like a, a, a grunted groaned kind of no sound. What is that? How hard does that hit him? I mean, Harry? yeah, Harry. Well, I'm looking over here to see what uh, Adam, you can go ahead and roll. I'm just curious. Uh, here we go. Every oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay then. Of us are going to be brain dead by the end of the night. So Harry sits down at the table next to his dad, <laughs> gazing at the yellow yarn in his hands, no. and he starts playing catch with it with Concord, <laughs> who's sitting across the table, and they both start bouncing the ball perfectly in rhythm. Uh. This, this is where this is where it's like does do, do i feel a disturbance in the force um so adam as you as you sort of extend your senses in towards this thing uh uh to to see what the heck this is you, it's it's like that you, you it's a I'm leaning in, it's perfectly safe, and you realize that you have unknowingly completely overbalanced over the ledge kind of situation, okay? So as you le kind of extend your senses, you realize, I mean, it's not physical, but it feels physical, where you have completely like tumbled in uh, forward on this thing, and it's just this like, and it's, it's kind of a Alice down the rabbit hole kind of uh, head over heels, tumble through this thing as as your viewport both tightens and you fall through it um uh even as it's getting smaller so that when you sort of crash down onto the floor inside the room um with no real sense now of any kind of weight that you're keeping apart from each other it's like as the magnets have snapped together kind of a deal um and there's no getting those things apart again. You've 
actually gotten smaller to get through that space and you're you're looking down and you're looking at it's it's concord form but it's atom size again inside of this uh uh space take insecure for me all right um and both of these things together here uh and there's this weird the, the the dissonant clangor of of Harry's words, it's not your fault and stuff, resolves itself as as Concord when he hits the ground, it doesn't make a thump of his body hitting this floor. It makes this deeply resonant chime. Uh and three of the Menagerie figures um, start moving. It'd be Charlotte and Jason and Leo, except as they step forward, their 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 shapes change. Uh, <clears throat> into it, it doesn't even, it doesn't look like twisted versions of them. It looks like different actual people and they all kind of look at uh at adam and and harry and and they say in unison what are you doing what have you done this is why we can't have nice things <laughs> now if you um. give me just a second here i need to grab uh give me some images here I can find... I need to grab the doomed playbook. <laughs> so, uh, I think Adam, as he tumbles in, is just going to be like, um, Harry, uh, exit's closing, and it's getting hot now. Yeah. Give me just a second here while I... Oh. Whatever you're doing, you might want to do it quick. Am I the only one concerned? This is very concerning. <laughs> is it? I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. There we go. Is that good? That's good. Yeah, that's good. All right. So, uh, yeah, Jason. What was Jason? Link uh, and uh, Charlotte sort of morph into these and they're they're scowling very profoundly at uh they're not here exactly except they kind of are somehow they're something you know hmm yeah really good question you what have you done adam what do you do I think I think I'm clear on what I think I'm clear on what uh uh Harry's doing here. Uh Harry, your dad is kind of rocking in his chair and kind of crying and shaking his head and like, you know, no, 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 no kind of thing. Uh Adam, what are you doing? Um Their attention, well, their attention seems to be split somewhat between you and the look of disgust slash horror that they have looking at you and that that yellow ball thing and back at you again and what hey, I, I don't think we've met. But I feel like we should have. We're trying to take care of a thing here, so if you could come back later, that would be great. What kind of abomination have you allowed to tarnish the uh, concordance? What are you? What did you? What did you do to our agent? And they're all saying, all three of them are saying this basically in unison. I am him. And they look again, and there's this like intense sense of 
uh, honestly, it feels most like being on the beach for too long. Like it's two hours into the beach and you, you're just, you're realizing how hot the sun is and that you're probably going to be super burned in the next day. Kind of sense of heat and pressure and air stillness around you as they turn and really, really look at you. Um, and they look and say, no, you are not the agent. You have stolen the concordance power. You have siphoned it away somehow at the death of the agent. You are, you are no concordance agent. And they, Ooh. they, <laughs> they, which, we're, I, hang on, gotta, we're, we're still riding. Come the, back from that whenever this happens. Yeah, but yeah no, well, sorry, go we're, ahead. We're still riding the three here, um, <laughs> or threes, I should say. Um, and the whole area is just actually almost feeling a little bit like the room itself is kind of shaking with uh, uh, the rocking and the head shaking and stuff of Harry's dad. Um, in the chair there and, uh, it, but, but the, at the same time, the, the reality of it is just really strong and they seem to almost be kind of riding that. What do you, what do you, what do you say to when they, you know, you're, you're not, you're not a concordance agent. What do you, what do you say to that? Ooh. You're probably not um, going to. They're going to keep talking, but I don't want to just ride over whatever it was you were going to say. Uh -huh. And Adam is just going to be like, you know, when they're like, you're, you know, you, you, you absorbed his powers whenever he died and that sort of stuff. It's just like, oh, no, he gave them to me. You don't get to tell me what happened down there. No concordance agent would give up their power to any other individual. It is sacrosanct. We will be coming to, and then one of them, one of them all by himself, all by itself. Uh, and I got to make sure I get the right one here. Uh, I'm not sure which one it would be, honestly, so I'm not going to worry about it. One of them says, uh, we will be coming to render judgment. And you find yourself, uh, uh, both of you standing uh, in the hospital room. Next to Streak, who is clutching Adam's hand and is still out, and but with tears like leaking out of the back corners of his eyes and down this like down his temples and into his hair, which has gone a little bit silvery <laughs> and a little bit is, is a few more. Maybe you're just seeing a few more crow's feet there. Than you might have otherwise. And. Hmm. Harry, I got to ask you, this is honest question to the player. Do you think Harry takes a powerful blow from this? Is this, is this enough of a setback on his heels for this to be a, be a powerful blow to him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This isn't a facing a too powerful enemy. So just roll conditions and, We'll see what we get from this from this thing. Not horrible, not as bad as it can be. Not great. Uh, let's look at what we got here. When you take a powerful blow, roll conditions on seven and nine. Uh, ooh, we got options here. Choose one. You can lash out verbally, provoke a teammate to foolhardy action. Oh my God! Or take advantage of your influence to inflict a condition. If you have influence, you can inflict a condition on a teammate. You give ground, your opposition gets an opportunity, or you struggle past the pain and mark two conditions. So I'm not sure about giving the opponent an opportunity exactly. Um, I'm not sure how that would necessarily work. There's the option here to lash out the teammate and provoke them to foolhardy action uh or just the fact that you have influence you can use it to inflict a condition we'd have to look that stuff up if that's 
you know, you, uh, you spend your influence. Yeah, and you, you spend uh, it, and and you basically trade your influence for a condition on. In this case, probably Adam. Like, what the hell was that? Why do they look like you? Why did they throw us out of my dad? I mean, all that stuff totally makes sense. Um, alternately, the the suck it up and internalize all of it like all good teenagers do. And, you know, 98% of most adults. And you ride it out and take a couple of conditions from all of this. Uh, I do have a suggestion for how the opponent could gain ground, but I don't okay. think anybody's going to like it. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean... When bad things happen during Take a Powerful Blow, nobody likes any of it, I don't think. So, I mean, if you have a suggestion, throw it out there. At least we can say no. It all kind of no. depends on who, who the uh, quote-unquote opponent is. Yeah. Uh, so the these three agents that have kind of invaded this, this mental space uh, stick around after this conversation, look around and be like, yeah, we can fix this the concordance way. Oh. <laughs> oh, my. That... That's terrifying and awesome. Uh, so, uh, Harry, you have a series of terrible options before you. You can lash out at, uh, I'm, I'm going to say it would have to be Concord. Lash out at Concord or or uh, or just, you know, to get him to take some sort of foolhardy action or just inflict a condition on him by with your harsh words, which certainly makes sense. Um you give your opponent. Isn't that what started all of this in the first place? You, yeah. Harry's harsh words. Well, no, Harry never really. I don't think he really laid it down very hard on his dad. His dad just sort of. No. He did it to himself a little bit. You know, he felt the guilt that his he was seeing in his son's face. I guess you can uh, give the, uh, your opponents an opportunity here, which um, certainly has some future repercussions, or you can internalize and take. Uh, some conditions. What do you think? This is harsh, man. Yeah. <laughs> James is like, yeah, 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 it is. I mean, Bill's thing is evil, which means that's the one I like the best. So... Uh, I. <laughs> don't want to break my dad, and I don't want to yell at Concord. But I mean, why? He's, he's so small aw. and an easy target. No, he's not. He's not. You're not small out here. You're back to normal uh, appearance out here. It was. It was just like... your your mental image of yourself. Uh, when you landed inside of the room was back down to young Adam. He did, he did say he could take care of all this. He had experience and everything. He convinced your mom. Yeah, to. You are What's the she embodiment say? of a shoulder devil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Was it nigh on 18 years now? You've just figured, now figured that out. <laughs> Come on. Um, I mean, I think that what Harry signed there will hard. So I'm going to go for the I take conditions. I mean, that's a very hairy thing to do, and it is it, it reinforces the hairiness of Harry. Absolutely, it's it's it. it Father I, like son. I absolutely, I absolutely. <laughs> hey, you know, that's not. That's not far wrong. I absolutely agree with it. I, I would embrace all of the other options too, just because having Harry finally not be Harry in a moment of stress is, is equally interesting, but I am down with that. So you pick, uh, figure out, you already have guilty and you already have afraid. Um, I see insecure, Collect them all. insecure and hopeless. So we're left with angry. Hmm. <clears throat> He's still not angry. How is he not angry about this? The guy is a monk. Um, because when he's their parent crying or upset, they don't get angry. They get upset. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's totally fair. Okay. Hey, Adam. Yeah. How you doing? What do you do? 
or say. I think it's just one of those like knowing glances over at uh, uh, over at Harry is just like. So, yeah. Uh, actually, hold on. Yeah, it's just like a quick little glance over at Harry. It's just like I need to figure this out. Yeah, there's there's more going on there than just. Oh no. Silver Streak feels guilty. There is definitely more going on in there than just Silver Streak feels guilty. The other thing was, who knows what the hell that was. They weren't actually there. Silver Streak was some kind of antenna slash landing pad slash reflecting dish. Uh, Yeah, you got to think about this. That was weird. Capital W. It's always weird with Adam. You could take some French fries. Okay. We good? That took a while, guys. I apologize for that, but it was, I think we just really uh, laid some stuff down there to have happen. Um, And as you guys are about to say and or do something, both of your um, comms start a sort of red alert kind of alarm. Um. I'm going to jump to I'm going to jump to Gigi and just kind of get her physically caught up. She's not going to have as nearly as big a thing going on here. Um, Gigi, you and Lucius are uh, just about outside of the has beans shop. Um, And Lucius kind of stops for a second and goes, hold on a moment, my dear. And he kind of he kind of draws himself up and puts his shoulders back a little bit and raises his head a little bit and rolls his rolls it kind of side to side. Um, let's out some air taps the cane down a little bit, you know, lightly though, like not like he's really resting on it, which he has been. And he steps just slightly away from you. Um, and he, he, he walks very like, that walk didn't, it was, all we did was a walk and that didn't even take any wind out of me. Sort of just a little yeah. walk around the block kind of a thing <laughs> as he does like the half block left before he uh, heads into the shop. Um, mm-hmm. And he comes in and kind of like hooks his cane over like a coat rack, the thing, uh, you know, coat stand there that's near the, that's near the front door and, uh, you know, unbuttons his coat and, you know, uh, calls out a couple of greetings, raises a hand uh, to, to um, JC, who looks at him suspiciously, looks at you suspiciously, looks at the rest of the room suspiciously, <laughs> um, and that sort of thing. Uh, what's that look for? And she's like, nothing. Well, you know, you were gone a little bit longer than I thought. You, well, you know. The weather was so nice, we just decided to take another turn around around the park. It's feeling good for it. Uh, we have a little bit more to discuss. Do you have everything in, in order here before uh, we get on, before, you know, so we can continue our little talk? Everyone's sort of studiously playing it cool around the ghost standing in the room. Um, doesn't, doesn't pay to act like any of this stuff is weird when you're around Lucius. You got to just kind of play it cool. Old guys have seen it all, right? Um, it's not going to be weirded out. And she's like, yeah, I guess. Sure. Fine. Do you want anything? Are you going back in the in the back room again? He's like, yep. Yep. We're going to head right back there. Too stuffy upstairs. Too warm outside. That's what he says. You, you're kind of suspecting in the back of your mind. It's like, too many stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really feel like doing stairs right now. So when he gets into the back room, he really kind of sinks into a seat. Uh, and folds his hands on the table a little bit and kind of looks at his hands. Uh, readers of the book are, are noting a, a remarkable similarity between that pose and the pose of, of Harry's dad in, the, in his own self, subconscious staring at the weird little ball of energy yarn. Uh, for just a moment, he looks up as Charlotte, uh, 
sits down and kind of forces this sort of thin smile and says, well, I think we made some headway, if not leaps and bounds forward, although I regretfully suspect that I may not be able to help you all the way through with uh, the the many I don't even wounds. let him finish. I don't, I don't even let him finish. I said, now, sir, if you remember when I came in here, I told you I just wanted you to help me understand this. I did not want to impose upon you or your family. The fact that I am able to help in, in even a small way means that I am naturally inclined to help. It's really you feel an ob obligation, and I believe me, um, I can understand that more and more. Um, well, it's really what my organization, it's really what my organization recruits for, if you understand. Now, you had your soldiers for lack of a better word and he's like sort of struggling for the word but when he says it, it, it says that i just kind of cringe yeah it's not a good word for you you have your people soldiers i suppose to provide you that energy it really felt as though the sword provided a focusing conduit there to channel that i don't and the 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 effort is high but I, I didn't feel personally as though there were any intrinsically uh, in, 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 energy that was intrinsically my own that was part of it, except for the effort that it took to simply direct it. So you will, of course, take this away and, and confer with your teammates and others. If you decide that you need assistance in this specific please understand that i am not the only bearer of a shard and i believe you know one of the others he is in your cohort uh, he doesn't go to your friend's school uh, but he is one of the in in one of the other teams here and i believe if you decide that he's necessary that that this is necessary and he sort of gestures kind of to where the sword would be if he were holding it huh that i will speak to him on your on your behalf and and see if i can harangue him into service i thought service was what you selected for <laughs> she gives a little giggle on that it's like he's he likes twinkle. he harrison is a very strong young man and he will be a fine knight. I suspect, however, that this particular task may not look sufficiently like a dragon or a windmill to really bring his blood up. <laughs> so he may need a little additional coaxing. And come to that, I believe JC may be able to help, honestly, he says with a bit of a smirk. But that's only if you just if you if you decide it's necessarily necessary. Certainly, your uh, friends are not without their with not without their own resources, and uh, I am sure that they'll be willing to help, especially since it's been relatively quiet for the last few days. Oh, don't say that. Right about then, <laughs> your your calm thing kind of my, my actually, cue phone goes off <laughs> actually actually uh uh you hear a crash kind of out on the street um like a a, a like a kind of crashing glass like a window but not not really that much there's some tearing metal uh tearing metal um a couple of shrieks some shouts of warning like get back get back and Kind of not in the front of the shop, but like out on the street, kind of near the shop, like out on the street that the shop is facing on. What do you what do you do? Um. And as you're kind of looking around or deciding what to do, he gets this kind of look on his face. You know, the minute I the moment it start the the, the words start to leave my lips, I realized <laughs> what I had done. Give my regards to your um, 
delightful daughter, and I um, hope to be chatting with you again soon. And I just kind of whoosh, no, whoosh, float, float off. Yeah, whoosh through all the walls to get out to the front. Um, okay, so what you see out there is a bit of a some chaos. Um, people kind of like looking and pointing and looking. Some of them are looking and pointing up in the sky. Some of them are looking and pointing at this storefront. It's about two or three buildings down. And again, this is downtown. It's like a nice area of town. And it's a small, like, boutique, very uh, uh, bespoke kind of jewelry and watch shop kind of thing about, about two or three buildings down. And it looks like somebody kind of broke out through the front door. There's a person, you know, a couple of people are pulling themselves back up. It looks like they were like knocked on their knocked on their backs. Um, and about 20 or 30 yards up and, and disappearing is uh, what uh, I'm just going to assume that you've seen these guys at some point in time. What well, looks like a raw symbiotic, except the thing has been like repainted to kind of look like it's in the color scheme of this shop. Like, it's all like different parts have been chromed or silvered and there's some red and gold like highlights on various panels and that sort of thing. And it's kind of rocketing up into the sky and, and uh, right now just going straight, but it's kind of uh, going at an angle. And you've got also like sort of an uh, alarm thing from from Leo. And we're just going to pause right there. Um, Leo. Who? Uh, I have questions. You probably have questions. Well, you first. Um, well, I think you were going to do a bit of an assess to kind of figure out what you, you had questions that you wanted to hit with, with an assess, right? I, yeah, but I think those, I, I was kind of throwing it back at you to say, like, is there any step that I need to take before I can do that? Yeah. One of the yeah. that I mentioned was like, do, do, do I need to actually have, have like, a copy of this bot that, that is flying around before I can figure out its control system, or well, do I also know enough where I can figure that out? It depends. I mean, some of these you may have to hold pending until you can get some of that stuff. Um, you know what you already know from from the from the previous role with like when your little your dad's kind of paper trap kind of tried to program you. So you've gleaned some of that stuff. Um, if you're, I mean. You, I, uh, I don't, I, I'm not going to pull up right now all the questions that you potentially had. I don't remember if there was stuff that was specifically about what's going on in the base right now, or if it was more about like what the control system is on the thing. Um, Mostly it was the control system. Like as far as right. as far as like this this black site here, um, Leo wasn't even thinking like that short term. He's yeah he's more worried about like the damage his dad can do. Right. So right. whatever goes on here might actually take him by surprise. Or Waters might be like, hey, you know, we actually need to get out of here alive first. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. see what happens. So you, you're you probably processing and, and doing some sort of logical, uh, drawing some logical conclusions. You know, well, this this is at least, you know, 50% likely to be true just based on what I've already seen. This other thing is, and, and Waters kind of like shakes your arm. It's like, uh, kid, uh not to tell you your business, but Otto is shouting upstairs and we should probably get there. Also that. And he points down the hallway and there's a couple of like Aegis guards that are running at you with like these like batons out. Kind of like, you know, honestly, I'm thinking of the batons from, oh my God, Demolition Man. Uh, I'll tell Waters, leave this to me. I'll take care of this. Okay. All right. Um, you have a plus one on this, uh, but it is a slightly different... Uh, what are you doing with the guards, uh, specifically? Are you gonna, like... Did you see the second Iron Man where Black Widow basically plows through the hallway? I'm doing that. <laughs> I did. I have a slightly different move, although I don't think it's actually going to uh, impede you at all. Um, but, yeah, no, it's not. All right, well, that's fine. Because you have a plus one forward on this. And I'm going to, let me see this thing here. Basically what it boils down to, because these guys are trained to fight metas, uh, rather than rolling, and you don't have your suit, rather than rolling uh, danger, you roll mundane, uh, which is uh, actually, which is actually a gift to you in this case. 
Uh, yeah, it's hardly a downside. Plus, you have a plus one going forward to deal with these guys. Uh, where did that plus one forward come from? Because that was the alternative I did not pick. Oh, was it? Which one did you... Or... Which one did uh, you... Excuse me, what you know, the first one was, it's not about making robots, and that's plus one forward to deal with compromise. Oh, to deal with the bots, right. But I took the second and third ones. Right, I was uh, mistaken. So you don't have the plus one forward on the guards. You've got a plus one forward on dealing with the bots and a plus one forward on uh, dealing with Rosa. So right, okay, you right. I'll take it then anyway. You just have a yeah, you just have a plus three mundane. So, so um, and this is you getting up to the top of the like kind of back out to the landing pad and stuff like that. Not every guard is, but certainly the ones near him are. So you you find yourself. Um, what does this look like since you're not in the suit? What it, what what is? I mean, is it very different from when he's in the suit, or what's what's his? What's he doing with these guys? Um, we pretty much saw what this looks like when Leo was fighting the Dread Queen. Um, he doesn't really need the suit to fight really well. When he opens up, um, every hit will land. Um, really, his priority here isn't necessarily I plow through the guards. Um, one of the things that's on Leo's mind right now is don't let Waters get involved in hitting the guards, not because he thinks that Waters can't handle himself, but because he thinks that like having to fight his own guys would stay with him for a while. He wants to spare him that. Mm. So at any moment, like if somebody's coming for, for the old man, Leo's going to cut him off. Um, but other than that, it's just going to be um, rapid fire punches and grabbing batons out of people's hands and smacking them in the head. Um, not quite as bloody as, as a similar scene from the second blade movie as well, but that was basically yeah. like the yeah. moves against a guy who fights really well. I remember, so, I, I, I'm remembering that scene with black Widow Cause she cleans out like, 15 guys while happy is like fighting one dude. Yeah. Um, and, and they're just a raid. In, and Dave in... helpfully dropped the gift into the Roll20 chat as well <laughs> for, for that. Uh, now, I do not look as good as an, in a cat suit. I will concede that point. There's some good ones there. Yeah. There's something you cannot see. I, um, I have to say, one that's a really good move. Um, one of the things that I uh, really enjoy about Jumanji is they, they did one of those sort of classic, uh, you know, get the legs around the neck and then do a spin around the guy, but um, managed to do something different with it where she actually goes kind of low um, with the little flip around the body thing that I hadn't seen as a little move kind of a thing. So it was kind of nice to see that move, which has become almost ubiquitous in girls fighting guy fights, you know, taking taken in a different direction it was kind of fun so this is great um all right so so lee is beating his way up through that and he gets out to sort of the open space where otto is and uh Otto's like hey boss you didn't happen to like throw a suitcase full of your suit in my trunk and not tell me did you uh it should be in there Okay, cool. That makes me feel a little bit better because that is not good. He's kind of pointing off towards the horizon. And where you would normally see like an approaching storm front, it's like dots, like in about a – and considering the distance, it's chilling to see this in like a 60-degree arc in the sky out from your location. Okay, that's not good. They are. Uh, they are. There's, there's a lot of them. Uh, let me ask Waters really fast then. Um, hey, I, I, I got all this stuff here. Can we get Rossum out of that security? Can, can we open those doors and, and extract him? Wait, you want to let him out? He, there's something coming, which is coming for him. He, oh. Break him out? You want to... You wanna, Walk me through this, kid. You want you want you, you think they're coming to kill him? No. Oh, you want to keep him away from him? Yeah. Okay. Uh Oh boy, this is uh I'm going to have so much paperwork. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can Oh, he just fought through all those guys. Why don't you get your uh, pants on and we'll... Oh, boy, this is a bad idea. I really hope that you're being a genius right now. Uh, 
Okay. Do you call is because at some point I, I've sort of written in that you call everybody and tell them stuff. What do you? Are, that's, are you? Doing? That's going to happen in a second. But Leo's got one more thing to say to him. All right. Uh, okay. You know, I also feel really bad because um, I, I kind of misled you back there. Um, the Phoenix, it is done. Oh, well, that's. Okay. Okay. And at this point, Leo's going to suit up and combine. I am terribly upset. Wait, you want. Okay. Just before you do the combine thing, uh, you want Waters to go down and get your dad by himself? Um, not necessarily. Like, uh, Otto can operate Phoenix by himself. Uh, Leo will come down and escort him, but and then, uh, right. we're basically preparing for the early arrivals. Sure. Sure. I'm, I'm fully expecting at least some of those units are going to get here before we're done. You so probably, yeah, you probably have enough time to get down there and get him before they're right on top of you, but it's going to be going to be reasonably close. Um, um, do you want do you want Otto to call everybody and let them know what's going on, or, uh, or I think, do you want I think he's going to have to. Yeah, um, like like when Lou gets out, he's going to add a personal load at the end of this. But right now. Um, yeah, he's just, he will trust Otto to do the right thing and Otto will know. Okay. Uh, do you, do you catch Otto up on any of your revelations about what must be going on and stuff like that? Or, um, he'll be like, yeah, dad said off something, um, bad things are on the way. Um, we, we may need to go back to house in really freaking fast and we're going to have an extra, extra passenger. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay, I'll let him. I'll let him know. All right. So, you go down with Waters and go after Rossum. Um, Alicia. Yay. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. No. Got it. I got to figure out what everybody else is doing before I get to uh, uh, <laughs> your your part. Okay. Um. I'm stepping to the curb where there's a big black escalator. Yeah, there's a big black escalator. You pop in, the, you, you, the door opens. There's nobody in the back. Um, uh, there are, there's like two people in the, in the front, you know, a driver and an additional guy. Um, there's a suitcase and there's a screen, like one of, you know, the DVD screen up on the roof kind of right. thing that's folded out. Uh -huh. That kind of a deal. Um, it's obviously, it's obviously thinner and cooler than that, but whatever. Um, and when you get in there and sit down, it kind of, uh, it, it looks like, um, uh, Parker was already on the screen and just sort of waiting. And she said, all right, uh, we don't have everything that you've specced out. We've got as close as we can get. I'm going to need you to suit up while I brief you on this. Uh, sorry, I can't be there in person, but frankly, I didn't think I was going to need to be. And then this fiasco happened uh, oh boy so here's what we know and this is as you're getting stuff going um special agent waters or rather your teammate link talked to special agent waters into allowing him access and also director uh costigan access to go and talk to his, no, that isn't what she says. To go and talk to Rossum the Minion Maker. She doesn't say his dad or anything like that because, you know, and, and, levels. And Alicia doesn't, Alicia doesn't correct her or uh, fill in that gap. Cool. Um, yeah, you would know, but you may not know that she knows. She doesn't right. know that you know. Exactly. All this other kind of stuff. So, hang on. I'm sorry. Hang on just one second. Mic off. Mic Sorry, on. I just had family walk in. Just one sec. Mic off.
mic on. Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right. So you're getting ready, and she says, "Here, here's what we know. Uh, somehow Leo or Waters talked Costigan into okaying this. He went out to a secure site where Rossum, the minion maker, was apparently incarcerated. And you can tell from some of the way she's phrasing this that – this she didn't know everything that was going on. Yeah, she was. This was not on a need to know for any of this kind of stuff either. Um, uh, he went down and had a conversation with him, and it cuts to security footage of Link, Leo actually just standing in front of like this glass held kind of thing, and water standing there next to him. And he talked to him for a few minutes, at which point uh, every Rossum manufactured bot in the East Coast area and nearby. Did she say, I'm sorry, did she say Rossum manufacturer? Or would they be actually Rook manufactured? They're, they're, I, I, Aegis would recognize them as Rossum, Rossum styling. Like, okay. Yeah. I mean, Rook's made no bones about that. They, they, uh, have had, you know, whether they've, I mean, hell, some of it they've patented. Um, but they, they've, they've made no bones about the last six to seven months. Their, their security bots have been modeled on recovered technology is what the whole official right. line is. Yeah, okay. I, I assume I assume they aren't touting their security bots as just like the ones Rossum used to make. <laughs> exactly, but uh, you know, reca recaptured, retask, hypertechnology, which is Rook's thing. They take, they find hypertech, they figure out how to make it not hypertech and work, and or at least you know hide the paint job and the serial numbers, um, and you know do all that. So every Rossum uh, uh, templated Rook bot that they have under their own controller that they've sold out to anybody went berserk and or broke out and went rogue and are currently headed towards that super secret island that nobody knows about. Uh, sometimes at uh, too. Sometimes a great uh, uh, no, Vitovia is not off the coast anymore. Um, sometimes no, no, Vitovia too. It's it's oh. the other smaller island that floats independent of Vitovia. <laughs> no, um, off in the in the nineties when they were short on cash. Nice. Um, they uh, and simultaneous with this happening, um. Your, oh, good. There's more. Yeah. Simultaneous with this happening, uh, apparently Link, either in collusion with the agent or with the agent unable to, with the agent on the ground unable to stop him, began attacking all the Aegis agents that were on, in on security detail in that prison. And we cut back to security footage of, from like security cameras of Leo just opening a can of whoop ass on all of the. Uh, guards in the prison <sighs> so what we have here is a situation where uh the uh, somebody from the menagerie went out and talked to rossum and now he's fighting aegis agents and a bunch of rook box are engaging or about to engage with an aegis facility and We can't, we can't raise Rook on the phone to find out if what, you know, what's going on with them, but they're hostile to anybody who tries to stop them. So we're not expecting to get anything out of that. So apparently Rook, I mean, I don't want to make guesses about this, but if you, it, but what the official like working Occam's razor assumption about this is that somehow Rook is allied himself with Leo Snow to free Rossum from an Aegis prison with great prejudice. We need you to stop him. 
Well, there's mul there's multiple <laughs> uh, there's multiple hymns in that sentence, but I'm certainly willing to uh, do what I can to stop Rossum from escaping. Will that do? Yes, she says after some after some contemplation of the various ways that that could be. Um, uh, you know, parsed, I guess, or the the good and the bad versions of that. Um, and during all this, you know, they're driving, you're in what, you know, it's kind of a, uh, prototype suit. You know, it's red and black. There's a bit of a jet. There, there's some, some, some paint chips on it. Uh, there's, you know, oh, Alicia, Alicia's making notes. There's a, you know, there's a, uh, you know, is it like a black and a black, like what color it wouldn't be going forward, but like a black and red kind of domino, not domino, uh, black and red, like full face mask kind of thing. Well, no, say we call the domino mask, the, the, the Harlequin. No, I want to, no. it, it would cover the face more. Um, well, but I mean, uh, the domino is just the. Around the eyes. But the, yeah, the dominoes just went around the eyes. I think like Domino a half. Domino as a character is a black and white gesture. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of the style of mask, not the not the character. So anyway, um, and so you've got you don't have the fancy batons. You do have like what looked like some sort of stun batons. You've got regular firearms with um a bunch of gel rounds, and you're somewhat uh disturbed to note like about a, a half dozen clips that have red tape around them, um. Which, you know, uh, Parker is not discussing the loadout necessarily. Uh, and they get you down to um, uh, sort of down next to the water. And they they have like a little, they, they get you out there and they have this thing waiting on the docks for you to use because it's Aegis and hang on one second while I grab it. Oh, do I get to say to the bat boat? No, you don't get to say to the bat boat. Um, there we go. Yeah, that's totally what it is. They have, oh, wait for it. I think, it, I think it disappeared. Too. Hello. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, that is totally a captured Vyartovian like personal transport vehicle. Um, there's actually like sort of like a piece of paper with the basic control instructions, like packing taped to the uh, like kind of like right next to the handlebars. Um, that should be fast okay. enough to get you out there. It's got the, G the GPS location is, has just been approved to be downloaded onto your thing because it took me this long to get them to admit that the damn place even existed. So now you can know where you're supposed to go to save the day. She says in a way that makes you think that she's talking over her shoulder to whoever that she's actually directing that last comment toward. Right. Um, Do, do I, uh, uh, do, is, is, is my, uh, my, uh, menagerie earbud in with the, uh, the yeah. kit? And as you're sitting down, like checking this, like sitting down into this thing and, and, uh, uh, um, they, as you're getting out of the car, like one of the other, like, you know, suited goon steps out and hands you like a little handheld tablet, like a little, just a phone size thing. And it's just her, it's like her on another like she just keeps talking on that one and switches her and her gaze switches over to a slightly different like screen on her screen window on her screen or something so she can talk to that window where you're at now on this other camera right and she just keeps briefing you as you get in there and sit down and about in the middle of her like giving you this last little bit and you know we need you to move just mount you know just, if you need to ask anything just the thing drops right into a slot on the on right. the dashboard and you can see but it's been jury rigged this is not ages tech so they're just like you know, it's not quite like they just ordered like a phone mount from Amazon and like spot welded it on here, but it's kind of like that. You uh, have to wonder what poor intern got that job. Right. It's like, I don't want to weld on this thing. It might melt down. It might blow and, up. And, and, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. How many demolished cycles were uh, <laughs> the result worth before they found out where they could actually we, mount it? We captured 14 of these. Man. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So, uh, and right about the time that she's sort of wrapping up, there's uh, like the squawk of an alarm alert thing on the comms uh, as. Um, you know, Otto sort of, you know, jumps on comms there and, and does all of that. Um, yeah, guys. Hey, is anybody there? We got, um, we got some stuff going down here. Going to need some help. And you're like, on my you... way. <laughs> all right. I'll get off the line. If you need anything, just holler or just yell, call out, call out. That's what she says. Wouldn't be holler. Anyway. Um, so. So is there, is there is there is there a mute on this uh this tablet that you can, Parker is yeah, you uh, can, nattering towards you can, me? You can just hit the call, you can just hit the cancel. I mean, she said she was just signing off right there anyway, so you can just hit oh, okay. The they do it all through Google Talk. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> We're doomed. No. Uh, I mean, the upside is you're going to lose her as soon as you get outside the state limits because the Wi-Fi will drop and the thing is absolutely useless on regular cellular. Right. So. Um, um once once i'm no longer in at least visible well and communication with parker I, I do want to get back on the the blower with Otto and you know find out wtf and uh the city doesn't face onto the ocean it faces out into a bay that you've got to get you know through this thing is fast um you know it's yeah it's not jet fast but it's a, it's the fastest you've ever seen on a ground effect vehicle certainly um or i guess in this case water effect um okay so auto uh leo i'm gonna have you speak for auto on this one um auto and everybody else on the team is in comms finally I, I kind of thought it'd be funny if you did, but yeah, I'll be happy. Okay, no, I'll, I'll do it. If, I'll do it if you want. It's fine. Uh, Having just heard, oh yeah, Leo Snow's obviously a traitor. I'm just like, yeah, let's see where that goes. <laughs> so, well, I mean, if I was just thinking about it today, like looking at the evidence. Sure, sure. It's, I mean, what the hell else are they going to assume is going on? So yeah, so so Alicia will come out and say. Uh, by the way, Aegis assumes that Leo is breaking his father out of prison with the help of Rook and all their bots. So um, if that's not the situation on the ground, do let me know before no, I arrive. No, 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 no. Rook is definitely not helping him break his dad out. I, I mean, I, he's, they're not here anyway. Ted's helping. Yeah, so some question as to whether <laughs> Ted had been suborned or not. Uh, I don't, I mean, you mean, is I, Ted in on the deal to break out Rossum and get him off the island along with Leo? Yes, but I, I Wait, mean, I don't I know about, you, I, I, I thought you said that, that this wasn't a breakout attempt. No, I said Rook wasn't helping. Oh, well, that makes everything all better. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, what? <laughs> you like that? No, 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 no. no. The, yeah, that was the whole thing. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Rook is definitely not helping with any of this. We're, everything else that you said is absolutely right as far as it goes. What's he going to say? It's exact. Sure. Uh, no, now, no, no. Now, I, now, now. You, realize you realize that that Aegis isn't going to let this happen well yeah when you say it out loud like that it sounds pretty bad but uh <laughs> it, it's not i think that's pretty cool i'm working on it it's um oh, yeah i was gonna say it's not gonna fit on me sorry um uh yeah so other people can talk. Everybody's on comms listening to this craziness happen. So Charlotte, uh, uh, Concord, uh, of course, Concord and Harry are kind of like half listening and half going, what horrors have we witnessed? Um, so so um, 
I, I have bots on the streets down here. Um, I rattle off what, what section of town I'm in. Yeah, they, um, I mean, and there's news. I mean, this is the other thing that uh, Parker would have mentioned also. They're like breaking out like that. The, the jewelry shop one was probably like a guard bot that because about uh, a few months ago, some bright some bright genius marketing guy at Rook decided that they were going to like, you know, start selling out some of the middle grade bots for like or leasing them or something to choice clientele. So they've got a they've got a Rook bot doing security for the jewelry shop, of course, and all that kind of stuff is probably what she saw. But yeah, they're they're breaking out everywhere. They're calling, you know, it's it's, it's all kinds of havoc. Rook is being so, so uncharacteristically silent about the whole thing. So Charlotte, are they? It, was the bot you're seeing actually flying off to this this mysterious island, or is there you know havoc in the streets and attacks and things like that going on? No, they it took off up into the air. So okay. yeah, they're not. Uh, it, the, the destruction being only them leaving their. None none may stop fl- me, kind of a thing. Fl- flying through the ceilings and and. Through people, yes. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much exactly that. Um, um, well, I can get there pretty fast. Anyone need a, a lift? I got Harry. <laughs> Poor Harry. My golf. I've got wheels. Oh, I don't think that's going to help you over the ocean. The cor- they're, hor- 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 they're horizontally mounted as, as a, with a, with duct fans, and a, it's you'll see. It's a sweet ride. <laughs> it's probably the most excited you've actually heard Alicia in, in uh, any of your interactions with her. So, um, it, that being the case, then uh, I will. Otto, I'm going to come to your trunk. It's in the dark. It's shaded. Mic on. Oh, you're going to... Okay. Targeting. Uh, Okay, that's... Sh- yeah. Sure? You're going to... Tell- yes. Because I figure that you know, I can either go to a place or a person. Yeah, and he's a place and a person, shadow. I guess, kind of. And I know that there's... Well, but I know there's shadow there. So, I can just target him. Punk. Yep, that works. I'm getting. And then a... just step out of it. Where am I getting weird echo? Why am I getting a weird echo? Is anybody else getting that? Where I'm, you're hearing Marchy twice? I'm hearing an echo of myself. I'm hearing it. Yeah. Yeah, probably coming from Dave. Maybe. No. Marchy, say something again. Yep, it was Dave. I'm too close to him. Okay, all right. Our anniversary was yesterday, so you know we can't get too far apart. I, I <sighs> congratulations on on many 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 years of of happiness. Now and bliss. you guys are all gushy. <laughs> were, were, mm-hmm. they, were they not? Oh, see, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to. See now I have to edit that. Um, all right. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, someone could ship Gigi and uh, Alicia. Oh dear. Oh dear. How's the uh, rescue going, by the way? The rescue? Oh, the rescue. Oh, the rescue. The, res- the, the 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 rescue is honestly uneventful because you sort of took out all the resistance. Uh, that going, you know, when you were leaving. So going back the other way is kind of eerily silent. These guys are going to be all right, aren't they? I mean, one of them kind of groans. He goes, uh, "All right, yeah." Jeez. More, more than that, we need to get him out of here, and we need to let the bots know we got him out of here, so they don't just roll into this facility and just crush everyone here. So I, I see where you're going. It's I uh, as soon as I get where I can get a decent signal, I'm going to have to explain this because they've got things that are going to be able to. They're they're they're. I mean, this is not going to look good if, until I get a chance to actually explain this to somebody. I get that. I get that. I mean, God, I don't even know what they must be thinking if they can see the security feeds on this, but it's probably not good. Um, I can tell you what they're thinking. I think that goddamn Leo Snow is up to no good again. Well, we'll just have to. All right. This is a little risky taking him out of here, but all right. Um, so he comes in and he hits a couple of override codes. Um, 
now that I know, like, have John Glover in mind, it's hard for me not to have, like, sort of a coy, quirky smile playing on his face as he sort of waits there with his hands folded in front of him, like, kind of folded over his belt in front of him, like he's just like a little choir boy kind of position. Oh, you got dressed up and you came back for me. This must be a special occasion. Are we going out someplace nice? We can do this where I hit you or where I don't. I am going to choose that second option after seeing, after seeing well, and knowing what you can do. I, I'll, gra I'll grab him and go then. I don't suppose we can stop for the security footage. I'd love to see recordings of what you did here. This is, this is marvelous work. You've gotten ruthless. This is, this is the, the part where I don't hit you involves you shutting up. He's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, watching one of the girls from the devil wears prada like walking through like a new like clothing design line and kind of looking around at all the at all the lovely new stuff and he's doing that but with the bodies laying in the hallway and stuff like oh that's that's lovely i love the lines on that kind of uh that sort of thing god damn it man just get on twitter and post this nonsense i don't want to hear it um so uh okay um do, do not put, give him your phone to put this on twitter he's not getting my goddamn phone <laughs> no um okay 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 so you're, you're getting him back out of there uh um As you're getting closer, you're starting to get snippets as you get, like, past a window or something. Not a window, but, like, you know, yeah, a window, I guess. Uh, you're getting snippets of some of the rest of the conversation. So you were saying, I got Harry. What are you going to do there? Otto's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with any of this stuff. I don't know whether uh, Rook is in on this or Or what? Rook is in on this. Hi, you guys. Hi. Leo. So Leo probably knows more than me because, well, it's Leo and it's me. So uh, also he was down there and he's walking out with his dad. Um, so I guess we're going to be um, the front of a conga line of robots that all want to kill us. Is that the plan? Yeah, any, anybody who's mobile and not fighting something, please get to the Rook Industries HQ in Halcyon right now. Uh, we're going to need you. Okay, so who's that? And I will start with people who are like probably closest to actually getting there. Uh, Ghost Girl uh, Ghost is a... I, I just want to insert right here that, that Leon the Professional Everyone gif. That's... Everyone. Say that again? I'll link it while you talk. All right. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, Gary I, love, Oldman. I love the picture of the of the bots. Look at them. Look at them. Love it. All right. Um, so, Ghost Girl, you were about to, like, sort of port to Otto. Uh, Alicia, you're probably not that far out of the city. You could certainly wheel around, or you can keep going. Um, continuing may be futile, but puts you maybe in Aegis's good graces for following orders. Uh, wheeling about is probably going to be more effective. Um He's talking about he's going to bundle up his dad and take off, and you might be able to get to the island fast, but odds are probably not good that you're going to be able to track somebody who's flying. Right. Um, um, but if you go, at least you can say you went, but that's kind of ineffectual and also doesn't let you hit anything. Yes, and, you know, um, I, I'm obviously expected to exercise my best judgment here. So, so you... I... I will wheel about, wheel about and, and head for... Uh... Wheel about in the bay. Um, Gigi, do you go to where they are on the island, or do you hold up and... and... Uh, Gigi is... Gigi's away. Um, All right. Gigi's uh, away from AFK. No problem. Concord and uh, 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 Harry, what do you what do you guys do? Um, I have a very good plan for this. Actually, it's a very horrible plan, but... Well, that would that would For remain me. consistent with how everything else has gone today. You guys had uh, a couple of really good roles and a couple of really bad roles, so let's see how this. But, goes. Uh, first, uh, before this all starts, Adam's just gonna like turn off his comm for a second, and just be like, uh, "Harry, do you want to be here for your dad, or 
do you, what do you want to do? Whatever is okay. You don't, I mean, without an assess happening or anything like that, you don't think anything got substantially worse for his dad. Um, it may have been like guilt intensified, but other, but other than that, it didn't get like, you didn't push him any closer to some sort of like abyss probably. Basically uh, Adam wants to give Harry an out here. Right. Just so he can like, you know, the mom nah, I can do that. And there is, I mean, Tempest does come back in and kind of look and seeing no changes. Her face kind of falls a little bit. Um, um, I don't know if you guys make any explanations or excuses or we just need more time or any of that kind of stuff. Harry, what do you think? Harry thinks he should unmute. There's a crazy idea. <laughs> so what do you think? takes after his mom when dealing with trauma and internalize and get something done that you can actually accomplish let's go help leo okay and and it's it's look you're at a higher enough floor on the hospital and looking out that you can see like swarms of bots sort of well becoming swarms as they leave the city and stuff so this is like they know something is up and there's a particularly nasty swarm of them rising from the rook building which is about 30 blocks distant and like it looks like I, honestly if, if you're far enough away some some of the it looks like a murmuration of sparrows except you know that they're each robots which is makes it kind of worse um so leo says i need you guys to get to the rook headquarters Um, what was your bad idea, Adam? Uh, my bad idea won't work here then. Okay. All right. Because well, my bad idea was, well, we did go to Rosa Rook's office that one time. I mean, that would get you to Rook headquarters, certainly. And, uh, oh, okay. Well, in that case. That would get you to. <laughs> bend a, spend a second burn to move any place you've previously been. Is that. Is Just that... Is it two burn? Because you got two left. Or is it one burn? Uh-huh. It's two burn. It's two one burn. burn to move any place you choose within a scene. And then Second two... burn to be any place you've been. Okay. Does that is that just you or is that is that Harry also? I mean Harry's fast. He I would imagine I could like take Harry, but you know, I think that's up to you. Um uh... I mean, what's What's the worst that we have? What's the worst that happens that we show up unexpectedly in Rosa Rook's office? Uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, is that more motivation for you to allow this? <laughs> well, I mean, it's just as bad if Harry has to race to catch up. Let's let let's, let's let Harry run. Harry needs to run. Run, and, Harry. And it's run. Thir it's thirty blocks away. It's not like you're. I mean, even teleporting, you're not going to get there that much before him. Um. Gigi, which way is she back? Yes. Okay. Um, so Gigi, Leo had said we need you guys to get to the Rook headquarters ASAP, um, and you were about to teleport to Otto. Do you want to go to Otto or or switch gears and and switch back over to Rook? It's it's entirely Where, wherever up. they want me to be. So I think that's I think that's Rook. Uh, Rook. Well, if you go if you if you go to Auto, then you'll get it. Rook, you'll get to Rook the same time Leo does. Well, yes. Yeah, I would hope that she's been around Leo long enough to realize that's exactly where he's going with that kind of tone of voice, and then she can catch a ride. But that's up to her. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, Leo. Let me ask you this: Do I know where Rook is? I don't. You you know? I mean, he says Rook headquarters. You know where that building is in the city? Yeah. I might, I might as well just go with Otto and let let them catch me up on the way. I think that's going to be amazing. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so you kind of go to where Otto kind of like, good. Otto's like, whoa, okay, <laughs> all right then. 
yeah, that happened. Hello and welcome to the party. Um, <laughs> as you kind of I am like, blushing as like as much as a guy can blush. <laughs> sort of step out of his trunk. Um, so you're on this island, kind of a big like landing pad kind of area. There is Otto there. There is Leo there. There is this. Uh, John Glover looking like older guy there. Um, uh, and there's this big, is it just sitting there in jet form? Is it doing, it's not really able to like do and interact anyway at this point, really, right? I mean, it's not like awake, awake yet. yet. Well, that's what I was having. Uh, well, it kind of is. That's what he was telling Waters. Uh, Otto was still kind of staring at though, um, but. Auto can basically combine with it, the, kind of in the same scale that Leo can combine with Auto. But it's not really, it's not like people awake. Oh, no, no, no. It's not a person. Yeah. Um, basically, imagine something about as smart as a movie animal, like like the hero, like the hero cowboy's horse. Yeah. Uh, something could do like complex tricks. Now imagine that's a dragon, and that's what its mind is like. Okay. I can, I, I'll, I, I'm on board with that. All it's right. dragon, Lassie. Dragon Lassie. Love it. Um, okay, so that's... You guys are there. Harry's racing to Rook. Concord teleports there, and Alicia is en route. Okay. Um, Concord, you appear in Rook's office. And you guys... I'm going to assume, Leo, that you guys are like sort of piling into Otto, and then from thence, Otto is piling into the Phoenix and... Oh, yeah, We're, we are going to get mo mobilized post haste. All right. All right. Um, is the plan to fly away from these things for a little bit and then loop back around or what? Uh, well, that's the trick. So Leo is going to have to concoct a plan really quick to let kind of let them know that he's got Rossum. Um, and that might mean letting the bots get really close. Right. Um, so whatever specifics. Like, going into that is probably going to happen first. Like, get, um, get everybody else in the vehicle and get you two standing out in the tarmac for long enough for at least one of the bots to see them. Exactly. Uh, he, was, he was quite serious about um, feeling that there was a risk to the agents in the base if the bots showed up and just kind of rolled through. Okay. All right. Like, whether that's, whether that's an actual concern or not, I don't know, but, like, you think about it. No, that's good. Um no, that's a, and that's perfect because yeah, in order to get them away from the Aegis guys, and yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Ted is meanwhile like sort of frantically um, on comms and shouting, "No, I'm not compromised." There, you know. Well, yeah, we did get him out of the cell, but you know, and he's not really finishing any sentences. Um, you can kind of hear even over the whine of everything, uh, you know, machinery sounds of everything else happening and stuff whoever's on the other end yelling a lot um concord you are in the rook office oh, i i see what your what your thing there was because you were thinking it was the other offices and stuff like that it doesn't matter you can get close and then from you know so actually rather than putting you in the office because the other one you're right the office that you guys were at that was rosa rooks was the one that was out the airport um, this one is like kind of, you can just kind of go to outside the building, like, and, you know, figure top floor outside the glass. Conveniently, most of the windows on this floor have been broken out violently. So you can see right into like the, uh, uh, executive suite at the top there. Um, and there's, there's a couple of security people and it looks like Rosa Rook kind of s leaning against like sitting against the edge of the desk and shouting into a phone and shouting at one of the security guys and some other stuff what do you do just sort of float up to the uh, open to the window and be like Hey, I understand the robots are going on a rampage. Um, you guys look like you could use some help. Uh, do you mind if I come in? Knock on the glass a little bit. Well, there's like, not really a glass. The broken glass. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last few, knocking the last few pieces out of the pane. Right, right, right. Um, what are you, what, what, <sighs> did you have, did you, 
I'll call back. And she kind of, you know, slams the phone down. <sighs> you look like you're on the phone. I can come back later uh, <laughs> if you want. No, it's fine. What's why are you here? There's got to be well, people that you rescue to rescue. What what's going on? Ah, well, good news. <laughs> We're keeping you safe for the time being. Why? Um, it's really long to explain, but basically, um, Actually, all what, the robots are uh, coming go ahead. here because of you. Why would they be coming here? They just left here. I don't here. understand. I don't make the plans around here. I just make the large energy blasts. They just and make... they just went berserk, attacked all of my security people, and left. Why would they be coming back? Look, I don't know all the intricate details here. <laughs> I just tell physics to shut up and sit down. Uh... Can anybody explain? Harry, you just uh, kind of arrived. Alicia, you're getting back into the city limits here. Um, this sounds like an amazing time for Leo to be finished with these shenanigans and be able to call in. But, uh, but we'll, we'll, I, I want I want just a few more seconds of confusion. Um, so Harry kind of skids to a stop, having like run up the side of the building and through the window. Um, and you catch kind of the tail end of that. It's like, they, why are they coming here? They just left here. And mm. Harry, like, Can, I, or not Harry, Adam, go, I don't know. I Actually, I do have a good one now. Okay. It's just like, look, lady, I don't make it. I don't make any of the stuff. You're really evil. And I am sent here to help you <laughs> for reasons I don't really understand. And my patience is this thin. She actually looks a little bit like affronted. I, you know, kiddo, you haven't earned the right to judge me on any of this at this point in time. I barely even know you. And all we've had happen today is get attacked by our own security bots. Doyce, please let me reject her influence. Uh, I need to say something there to... Uh, I mean, all you've done since you popped in here is tell me how you don't know anything. And now you're telling me how things is. No. Why don't you just sit down and let the adults do this and you focus on, I don't know, whatever homework you're ignoring right now and just leave this sort of thing to the grownups. So this would be like a shifting mundane up, shifting freak down kind of thing. Okay. You just be a little kid. Um, she knows enough about you to know that you're like certainly a I, kid. I was tiny the last time she saw me. It's true, and you're not right now. So, um, and she maybe even make some little snide comment that's like, "You may look bigger, but we all know that that's you know appearances can be a little bit deceiving." No. So why don't you just step right back and just let us get back? Let me get back on the phone and figure this thing out. Um, you want to reject influence? Yep. I'm really bad at this, but we'll give it a shot. What do you have to do to the? What is what is the roll? It is no. Oh, it's just a roll. Okay. Not not just reject influence. Yeah, yeah. On a hit, you successfully hold to yourself and tune them out. Nice. I am canceling their influence and taking plus one forward against them. Nice. You know, I think this is amusing us through the things that we actually hit tonight. <laughs> Versus the things that... Life and death for a character's father? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Telling Rosa Rook... Look... <laughs> Telling Rosa Rook to shove it? Yeah. Um, on a seven to nine, choose one. Cancel the influence. Take plus one forward against him. All right, great. Um... <clears throat> um, I am just looking for some sort of explanation as to why they'd all be coming back here when they just broke out. And that's when Harry arrives. And that's yeah, that's when Harry arrives. Uh, and honestly, I mean, Harry, what do you do? One of the easiest thing to do would just be to kind of put her on team speakerphone so Link can kind of catch her up, I guess, or something. What do you think? Harry. 
I could Are unmute. You, you could unmute. Harry unmutes and then and then what? Turns on the team speaker phone so Rosa can get talk to Leo or what? Yeah. Okay. Uh all right. So Yeah. Uh oh great. I'm in teen group chat. Who's on the other line here? Who's on the other end? And somebody explain what's going on. Why am I about to be attacked again? Please please tell me there's a video option, Joyce. Sure. Why not? We'll do it a little uh, holographic uh, wrist cam kind of thing above above uh, Harry's arm. Oh, good. Um, I, I want Leo to be in frame, and I want him to drag his dad into frame. Oh. Who am I? Oh, Rosa! How have things been? Hey, Rosa Ruck. It's Leo Snow. You knew that. Uh, I thought you'd like to meet my dad. I, uh, this one's one. Oh, have you met? Where are you? Not where you're keeping him. And she, she like grabs her phone and like brings it up to, you know, she hits like two numbers and um actually no she doesn't even like call she like taps out like a quick text kind of a thing onto the phone and what is your dad's actual first name i have never specified i've left that up to you oh man i gotta come up with a name We've got 33 sessions and never thought about this. That's great. <laughs> yeah, well, it's never. It's always just been Rossum, and I just like it so much. Um, who is who is the author or who is the uh, playwright? I was. Why? Why? Why do you? Why get out of my head? <laughs> Carl. Carl, right? Are you are? Capek. So Carl, you can Carl, make a... Carl, but uh, uh... I do find it funny that Rossum is his first name in the book. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if that really Actually, was his first name? We'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just keep it. I'm, I'm not going to try to get into this right now because, um, so she taps something, she waits a second, she gets a reply and she goes, all right, Snow, what's going on? Because you say where I had him, but that's not who I've been talking to. So what's going on? Rossum, what's going on? Dad? Well... I had a few contingency plans in place in case I ever had uh, uh, I was ever invited to stay to overextend my welcome at anybody's location. In this case, it turned out to be Aegis. Did not see that coming. That's my son. He 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 worked that out. Made made that happen. Very 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 remarkable. Uh so I had a little uh, friend of mine go around, say he was me, make a few friends, spread my little friends around. And once I they had an idea of where I was, eh, come and get me. Uh, you know, they, they respond to they respond to their master. So uh, that's what they're that's what they're doing right now. But thank you so much for really, I guess it seems like based on what I am seeing out of this window, really stepping up production over the course of the last year, Rosa. This is um, you must have several factories dedicated to these guys. And uh, 
I tell you, the baseline code in the chips, that is really hard to overwrite with software. And she, um, uh, she growled, like she picks, she taps a, but, uh, a section of the screen, um, puts it up to her and says, put him in a cell. Uh, he was in one. No, I, oh, he's not I talking to you guys. He was talking to whoever was on the other end. Oh, no, I see what you're saying. Um, uh, all right, fine. So you pulled yourself a little double cross, Rossum, but why am I being told that all the bots are going to be coming back here after me? What's going on? Because I'm flying to your location. They want him. They're following me. You have until I get there to help me fix this. You're going to lead tens of thousands of combat capable robots answering to your father back into the Helsian city limits. Are you sure about this? Link. Well, Link. Uh, let's see. I don't know who built them. Hmm. Let me think. Oh. What, what, what crazy bitch would have done something so monumentally stupid? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um. Uh, all right. Fine. We'll work together. We'll figure out something else. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to figure out, we'll figure out what to do. And right about, um, Dave, go what you were saying. I was about to get you was, there. So, okay. I was just, at, at the risk of interrupting this delightful interlude, sorry <laughs> to interrupt. If the robots respond to their master, perhaps, um, the, the cloned asset that Ms. Rook appears to have would be uh, similarly effective. Um, right, we can probably, and right about then her phone like beeps or chirps or, or warbles some sort of alarm thing. Um, was that him breaking out? I bet that was him breaking out. Uh, and she, she's like, or she, dying. She pops, she, the sludge. she taps the screen and, and goes, what? And you hear like sort of a, Alicia, you'd probably, yeah, Alicia, you'd probably, you'd probably catch at least some of this. Um, uh -oh. somebody is shouting on the other end, something about, uh, some sort of bracelet, some sort of red blinking. Um, he's just sitting there and laughing um, and Leo, all of the bots that were chasing the Phoenix have ever so slightly altered course and they're, they're still going back towards, uh, the coast, but they're not, you think actually chasing you now. I was afraid of that. Yep. So. And uh, your your dad's looking out the window at, at everything. As he catches your glance, he looks back and he goes, "Oh, well, damn, that's going to be a bit of a problem." Hey, you know, if you're no longer useful, we I can just drop you out here. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm I'm full of I'm full of vim vigor and many brilliant ideas. I'm just, I'm just uh, uh, are you sure? I mean, it's fresh air out there. He's kind of pressing, he's pressing one finger against his lips, like deep in thought. This is, remember when I said that you should uh, make as many. Uh... This should be startlingly obvious to a brilliant man like yourself. You should, well, the problem, you know, we'll cover this as we, as we try. I, this is. There are downsides to using your technology when you're as old as I am. It's this is frustrating. 
And we're going to stop right there, which I apologize, Bill. I didn't get you didn't really get to do much in the way of rolling. Um, no, this is 300 percent better. I like this. Everybody, everybody is going to get to punch everything next time. If that's any consolation, there will be everything to punch. So I am ready for that. And actually, um, if the dice were any indication, I don't think many of you really wanted to roll too many dice anyway. Uh, Alicia didn't get to roll any dice, but she did get a sweet bike. So, <laughs> so there is that. I like how you've been trying to figure out the bike, and I just sort of randomly needed ages to provide something to you really quick. And uh, I go, oh shit, yeah, they probably stole some Furotopian stuff. I might have something good in there. <laughs> And they're never getting it back. And they're never getting it back. <laughs> and it's going to have a sweet black and red paint job in a hot second. Um, okay. So that's where we are. There. I did not – I apologize. I did not expect uh, Harry's dad's thing to go as long as it did. That was like a solid hour, but it was kind of amazing. So I'm bummed, but uh, uh, at the same time also kind of like think it was uh, great. So sorry about that. Um, uh, beginning from, I think we'll start in order of shittiest role first. So Harry, uh, closer to the team. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Adam, you were the three closer to the team, further away from the team or more into your own image of yourself. Technically we're both the three, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to grow, grow closer to Harry. Okay. Uh, Harry. Closer to the team, further away from the team, more into your own image of yourself. To Adam. Closer to Adam. Okay. Uh, both of you guys uh, pick up potential as you are, uh, or or I guess clear condition. Well, pick up potential or clear condition, which some of you may be inclined to do, Harry. Um, or ride into a fight with million zillion robots with four conditions. You know what? Who am I to judge? <laughs> I don't want to say one way or the other what is a good or a bad idea at this point in time. It's all good. And you're not, I mean, well, I guess angry would be. What's what's the condition that interferes with directly engage? Afraid. 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 Yeah. All right. Uh, Charlotte. I don't think you actually rolled, but I'll have you go next. Closer to the team, further away from the team, more into your own image of yourself. Um, well, given, given from today's content, I'll have to say more into the image of myself because yeah. it's mostly around resolving things with, with Lucius. Yeah, plot stuff there. So, no, yeah, not, not a lot of rules. Apologies for that. But definitely a way forward on all of the stuff. I, I, had, I had lots of lots of uh, screen time yet last week. Yes. Well, that'd be good stuff, and there's there's great stuff coming here. I actually don't think I'm going to jinx myself by saying this. The Rossum thing might be a flare, but I don't think it's going to be like eight sessions of your Tovia kind of like. Yeah, these guys are. So there'll be this something will happen resolution wise uh, pretty quickly with some of. Either these. we're going to save the world or we're going to start a new game. As much as I, <laughs> as much as I enjoyed. Uh, Rossum as he was played in the in the cell. Rossum out of the cell and getting somewhat sort of like giddy and gleeful with being out is even more fun. Um, Gary parallels to Alicia in that. I will note parenthetically that uh, John Glover, as he appeared in the uh, much uh, the, the 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 tragically uh short-lived brimstone series one of my favorite characters of all uh -huh. time. oh my god love that show so much um anyway where are we at alicia close to the team further away from the team more near an image of yourself well it's got to be closer to the team because actually doing stuff with team yay Woo! um and choosing the team over aegis orders even before ted started hollering right you know stuff so um, well, 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 what should they expect? Who's gonna, um, who are you giving influence to? Who, who am I going to give influence to? Uh, boy, that's tough. Um, Say Otto. You know what? I'm... <laughs> um, I'm going to say Leo. Because the, 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 the shit he's doing here is just crazy enough for me to respect him. 
Okay. All right. Leo already has influence, so uh, that'll be uh, those traditional shifting of labels. Uh, and I think finally that means Leo, close to the team, further away from the team, more into your own image of yourself. Oh, God. Yeah, right? It's This is tricky for you. Um, so I'm going to take danger from zero to five. What? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I almost want to say, um, closer to the team to Alicia specifically, because we've had like these two conversations where they grew closer, but that was on the forum. So I don't know if you want to count. That. I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine with that. And the fact that when you guys, when you ask for what you ask for, I, I certainly see as you know holistically closer to the team because you know i need you guys to do this and they just did it um like everybody did well yeah everybody did some version of that um even alicia didn't even throw any flag she just you know wheeled the bike around and back she goes and yeah you guys did have a couple of good conversations on the on the forums as well so i'm fine with that the stuff i mean <laughs> i can't say the stuff on the forum doesn't count because literally everything in this session right now is because of something that happens on the forum so that's fair uh and so grass to alicia for finally getting influence over leo <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay there, there should be like a fourth choice which is you know grow farther away from your image of yourself <laughs> <laughs> team, the team for, votes on for, what for, yeah the team votes on like what to and all you do is roll threes you know i think that's well you've got your own like harsh things at least you know it takes the sting out of it getting that influence ah anyway yeah so if you guys could just like pile into auto here and we're just gonna have like this big group comfort and support and we'll recharge everybody and then we'll go kill everybody it's gonna be great it's... I don't know if there's, I don't know if, it, unless all of you target Harry simultaneously on comfort and support. Well, I, I did try back in the thing whenever it was like, hey, Harry, do you sure you want to do this? And that sort that, of thing. Well, but I don't think, I don't think that was really like heard as one of those I, either. So. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it took. Certainly it didn't, I, it didn't ping my radar, so I don't know. Well, it, it didn't seem like it w felt like one for Harry either. Yeah. Well, it was a rough time, and I look forward to revisiting that whole thing again and, and trying to break uh, – well, it, just try to figure out what the heck's going on with this dad. Um, because well, well, because that's more than a coma, right. for sure. You were going to say something, uh, uh, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I cut in early. Um, mostly, I'm really proud that we got Rosa Rook on board without even having to use that adult move of Persuade with Best Interest. Like, I was like, yeah, he's going to make me roll it. And yeah, I'm probably going to do pretty well. And yeah, I have the plus four, one forward ready for this moment. But then she's just like, yeah, okay. That was yeah, I mean, I didn't, it didn't, she's not an idiot, you know, and you're going to help. And she's flat out knows that badness is coming. So sometimes it's just say yes, you know. You know and that's why, like, I, I'm happy not having rolled a bunch of dice because there was still dramatic tension and there was stress and, and we still got to do exciting things. Yeah. So I'm really it's, happy about that. It's all good. Yeah. It feels pretty good. Um, the only time I, the only move I ever wish that I had, I'm going to stop this recording here first.